Hello, I'm Daniel Davis, Director of Natural Sciences Lecture Demonstrations here at Harvard University. We're about to look at eddy currents, uh, both at room temperature and at liquid nitrogen temperature. So here we have a block of copper that's two inches by six inches by six inches. It's at room temperature. And although copper is not uh, uh, magnetic, it's not ferrous, um, because of eddy currents induced in the copper by the, uh, by the magnet, uh, there are counter uh, forces that are produced by the eddy currents induced in the copper by the magnet that uh, uh, oppose the external uh, magnetic uh, flux uh, so to produce an opposing force that reduces the uh, descent of the magnet. So in comparison, if I take my magnet over here just on the, on the plastic top and then turn it over or, or tip it over and then we compare on the copper block for a comparison, we see that it falls much more quickly and if I drop the block, and then on the copper, we can see that silent there's, too, so. there's a very slow descent. Wow. Now the conductivity of copper uh, increases as the temperature goes down. So if we compare uh, that block with a sister block here that's been cooled down to 77 Kelvin or about minus 196 Celsius, we can do the same thing with our magnet here and tip it over. we can see that the descent is even slower. So the uh, eddy currents are even stronger for the same change in flux. Also, if I try to lift the magnet rapidly, uh, I sense a resistance. And if I let the magnet drop, <laughs> there's a very, very slow descent. If I give the magnet a spin, I'll let it drop. Oh, wow. <laughs> it even had a bounce. Oh, wow. The, the back magnetic force is so powerful. Correct. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. So, one last time. Okay. So because of this eddy current effect, uh, we can uh, actually use it uh, to do some quasi-static levitation. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, here I have uh, this two by two, or this two inches by six inches by six inches copper block, and then uh, there is a couple inch separation, and then a one inch copper block down below. Now I'm going to put our magnet with the south side up in between, and I'm going to take out another very strong magnet. Now, normally, you would not want to take two very strong magnets and bring them close to one another um, because uh, one magnet would rapidly be attracted to the other, and with magnets of this strength, they can be very, uh, uh, they can accelerate so much that the magnets can shatter or pinch uh, you uh, and uh, cause harm. Mm. But uh, here, when I take this magnet, this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole, and I bring it over here to the, uh, to the copper, then the magnet down below will be accelerated to the magnet up top, but because of the uh, change in flux produced by the lower magnet accelerating upwards, mm. it produces eddy currents and an opposing magnetic force that slows its descent as it comes up, so it won't be so rapidly lifted. Okay. And it's slow enough that I can actually, using visual feedback, I can vary the height of the magnet. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. It's like what every kid tries to do at home as a kid to try to make a magnet float with another magnet. Yes, but now, but now with the, the help of eddy currents, you can actually make it possible. There's some, I mean, I don't know if I'd call it dampening. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, and then what I, well, I was wondering if it, because bef before you put it, the top magnet, I wasn't sure if, the uh, mi the magnet floating would reach some sort of equilibrium uh, based on like uh, the magnitude of the uh, of the back magnetic field like created by the magnet floating. Or um, so yeah. there is uh, there is a result in ENM. Uh, I believe it is Aronshaw's theorem, and uh, so it says that there's no stable uh, levitation uh, with uh, static magnetic or electric forces. Okay. Um, and uh, that is because there are no local minima 
uh, in uh, electric or magnetic forces. And so in contrast to having like a marble uh, uh, move back and forth in a little well, um, uh, if we visualize electric or magnetic fields, there's no little uh, uh, potholes or dimples for the for for the magnet to get caught in. Oh. Um, instead, uh, the maxima and the minima are at the at the boundary conditions. Um, uh, so uh, what this is is this is not uh, stable uh, levitation. Uh, instead, it requires me actually having to modulate, bring the the magnet either closer or further away to keep the uh, magnet from either resting on the bottom or hitting the top. Oh, wow. And being able to do that requires the eddy currents slowing uh, the acceleration of the lower magnet down to the point that I can correct within the reaction time mm. of, uh, 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 of my, uh, my visual reaction time to move the magnet up or down. So this is not, uh, not true, uh, you know, stable levitation. Mm. Yep. Wow. And I wonder how that differs from uh, superconducting magnets that seem to lock in space. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you asked because uh, um, I do have uh, some yttrium barium copper oxide, and uh, we'll go grab some more uh, liquid nitrogen and then have a look at that in a moment. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so this one's flux pinned higher. Yes. And that one not and you'll notice that the one down below doesn't doesn't seem to rotate it or it doesn't travel as freely uh-huh um so there are a little bit of losses it's warming up um or, i think there are some losses with you know with the more the more pin flux that you have the more uh <laughs> the more what are you saying so uh, um just by by observation that the one that's <clears throat> pushed down I have to push down on it more to get it to ride lower mm -hmm. and it also doesn't oh my uh, gosh it doesn't it doesn't go as freely as the one that's higher up so yeah there seems to be more losses it slows down uh, more quickly uh. wow So we have a glass tube, this is a Rica tube, and we've got a piece of uh, uh, steel mesh that's here on the bottom. I'm going to heat that and uh, create some convection through the tube, and uh, standing waves are going to uh, arise in the tube and we're going to hear a tone. I'm also going to put a little piece of uh, styrofoam uh, up top and we'll see the styrofoam levitate in the top, and hopefully in the thermal camera, um, I'm hoping to see an end cap or a cap here on the end uh, corresponding to the acoustic end correction uh, for the pipe. Uh, that end correction being that if you calculate the frequency based on the speed of sound and the length, you end up coming up uh, with a length that's shorter than it should be. Uh, and presumably this end correction, uh, which I hope to see in the, in the thermal camera, uh, might explain that uh, or account for that end correction. So here we go. styrofoam to melt the uh, the hot uh, hot screen and one last time Rika tubes, R-I-J-K-E, named after P.L. Rika, who was at the University of Leiden. He's putting hydrogen in it. Oh no.
Oh my god. Okay, so we're doing a a high voltage capacitor discharge through the steel wire. Here's the gigantic capacitor bank, and here's the charging circuit. A really cool, this is a vacuum tube switch. A vacuum tube switch, correct, yep. Vacuum tube switch, and here's the capacitors with, yeah. You so there are, yeah. uh, it's a 2,000 microfarads total, so it's five, 4, 000, uh, five 400 microfarad capacitors in parallel. Yeah. And we charge up to 3.4 kilovolts uh, for a total energy of about 12 kilojoules. And we're going to be discharging that through a 50 thousandths uh, thick uh, uh, loop of steel wire that's about a meter in, uh, in overall length. And the interesting thing to look for is we're going to be looking at it from end on. Mm. And uh, with, the, um, uh, with the current going uh, uh, through the loop in this way, then mm. uh, there is a uh, magnetic field coming out uh, at us. And then if you look at uh, the Lorentz force of the current uh, crossed in the direction of the field, the current crossed in the direction of the field, the current crossed in the direction of the field, there's a radial force outwards. So you're going to see the <laughs> wire after it uh, melts, you're going to see a spray of uh, sparks go radially outwards with the Lorentz force. <laughs> wow. Okay. 2,000 microfarads charged 3.4 kilovolts for 12 kilojoules of energy, discharged through a 50 thousandths diameter, one meter length of steel wire, discharging in five, four, three, Two, one. Oh. And there's the metal vapor, the smoke. 